we are on stand at London Gatwick back in the brand new iFly 737 MAX 8 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And today we'll be discussing how we set up the plane from cold and dark through to our taxi. And this is very much a quick start guide covering all the essentials needed to get you up and running as quickly and simply as possible. And if you did miss the first episode in my iFly series, we took a complete walkthrough of the interior cabin, checking out all the features that have been modelled, and I'll put a link to that in the description below, so do consider checking that out. Uh, but for today, we'll be seeing how the systems actually work, and as nice as it is having animated toilets and cabin lighting, what's really important is how the plane actually flies, and this is also still the pre-release build, so there are a few bugs that need to be addressed, but let's see how we get on and hop inside and get started. OK, if we make our way through to the flight deck then, as we can see all the systems are fully shut down so we're completely cold and dark. Uh, let's take the captain's seat and get things fired up. So to begin with then, we'll switch on the EFB and click on our SIM menu and then we will go ground support and then we can um, connect our ground power and set to all our chocks and then we hit the set button at the bottom left there. And if we take a look overhead we can see our ground power is now available so we will pop our batteries on and that automatically closes the cover and then ground power on and a bit further overhead we will align our IRS's so both switches go to nav and we just wait for those to align and it will go to on DC there we go so they're doing their thing now back down to the overhead we'll switch our cabin utilities on and we'll pop the emergency exit lights to armed and we'll also put our seatbelt signs on auto and switch our anti-collision lights on so our displays are all powered up then, so we'll go down to the FMC and hit IDENT followed by POS in it, and we're going to select our left GPS coordinate and select that and drop it into our set IRS position, there we go. And now we can also put in our airport reference which is EGKK for Gatwick, and we're on stand 53. And then we can think about importing our flight plan, so we'll hit ROOT and then we're going to press flight plan request and that will import our Simbrief flight plan. So there we go, route 1 uplink ready, and I'll hit load, and we'll just wait a couple of seconds. And there we go, that's all loaded in, so now we can add our flight number, which is TomJet107. We'll add that in there, and we are going to be departing on runway 26 left, so we can add that in as well. And then just hit the activate, followed by execute button. So now we can enter our SID for our departure, so hit the departure button, followed by runway 26 left and we're going to be leaving on the Minfi 1 mic departure and then execute that and then for our arrival runway we are expecting ILS Zulu 1-1 uh, which is there on the right hand side and our star is going to be the Neras 2 Zulu star there and uh, our transition is going to be PILAP so we'll enter that and then execute so there we go that is the flight plan pretty much taken care of and we can turn our attentions to our performance so back in the EFB and we're going to press the performance tab and then weight and balance and we're going to get the aircraft loaded up for our departure so let's fire up Navigraph so we can get our flight plan on screen and then we can just transfer some numbers into the plane uh, so passengers we are looking for 121 passengers for today so we can drop that in one two one there we go and then fuel uh, we need where are we uh, here we go, 7,475 kilos, so we'll round that up to uh, 7.9 tonnes for today, so 7900, and drop that in, or 7901, and then we want our taxi out fuel, which is 191, so we can uh, pop 191 in there, and then our planned trip fuel is 4698, so 4698. So that is all our fuel added, and that's given us a zero fuel weight of 55779. And if I just quickly look at Simbrief, we're looking for 56.3 tonnes as our zero fuel. So we'll just add some cargo to sort of round that up a bit. So we'll do 250 kilos in the front, and we'll do 300 in the back. And there we go, that's given us 56.3. Close enough. Um, so basically that is all our payload sorted so we'll click set payload and also set fuel and that transfers all the info from the EFB down into the plane and if we take a look at our display we can see we've got 7.9 tonnes of fuel a little bit in the centre tanks not too much so that's all looking fine and then we can come back to the EFB and press complete and then that brings up the uh, takeoff performance page so back to the FMC and we click our gross weight button which automatically populates 
and uh, our reserves are 2.1 tonnes so we can add those in, cost index is all filled in uh, cruise winds are uh, 261 degrees at 19 knots so we can add those in, 261 slash 019 and we can drop that in and our average ISA is 1 degree so we'll just add that in on the right hand side there and then we just press execute and now we can move on to our N1 limit page. So back over to the EFB then and to our performance calculator and if we click the uh, copy FMC data button on the left that brings in all the info from our FMC so we've got our conditions, wind, outside air temperature QNH and our takeoff weight and central gravity and let's go for a reduced takeoff rating of 2, flaps 5 and our aircon can be on, anti-ice off and if we filled it all out correctly we should get the grey calculate button up here so let's press that and there we go that has calculated all our V speeds for takeoff it's got our cell temp of 40 degrees so let's transfer that info into the FMC so we've got a takeoff D rate of 2, uh, 40 degrees on our cell temp and then for takeoff we were flaps 5 and we hit the center of gravity button and it automatically fills so 22 percent that gives us a trim setting of 6.3 and our v speeds were 138 138 and 145 so 138 138 and 145 so everything tallies up and that is our pre-flight complete so to the mcp then and we can start entering some data for our takeoff so our initial clearance altitude is 6000 for today so we'll wind 6000 into the window there we go and uh, our runway heading is 257 degrees so we'll add that there we go and our V2 speed was 145 145 so we'll wind that in as well there we go set and we also want to pop both flight directors on along with our auto throttle and also we can pop LNAV and VNAV on as well and lastly we want to add our QNH in as well uh, I'm just going to press B which is a keyboard shortcut but you can also wind that in on the barrow too. Okay that is everything set in our MCP so we can think about turning on the APU so your damper can go on, uh, left aft fuel pump can go on and then we'll turn the APU to on, wait a couple of seconds and then hit start. There we go. So just like the 737NG the MAX has uh, an APU which is a small jet engine in the rear of the aircraft which supplies bleed air down to both engines in order to get them started and the sounds are really good in the iFly as well, let's just have a, have a little listen I hope you're picking that up, that sounds really cool okay so now we're just waiting for the APU gen to become available which is that light there uh, then we can transfer the power over from the ground power to the APU so just while we wait for that let's um, come in and close the door and then we'll also uh, remove our chocks there we go and again hit the set button and there we go our APU gen is now available so we just flick these two center switches here to transfer the power over to the APU and we can just double check that's worked with this little dial here and we can see uh, the APU gen is now on so we can disconnect our ground power so click disconnect and then set so all our systems are now being powered by the APU and let me show you another little cool feature we have airport maps in the EFB as well I'll just zoom in a little bit and we can uh, see ourselves on stand there uh, we can center it on our aircraft and that just helps when we're uh, sort of taxiing out so yeah very cool feature okay it's about time to start thinking about turning on some engines so we will fire up GSX and request pushback and departure and let's also now turn our hydraulics on and also our probes and window heats can go on too and finally we'll also pop our fuel pumps on we've got a little bit in the centre tank so we'll pop them all on there we go and here comes our friendly dispatcher and she's going to pop the bypass pin into our nose wheel gear here she comes sounds good to me so here she comes with her bypass pin and let's hop outside and take a look the exterior model is also really nicely done in fact I might do a video on that as well at some point Departure check completed. Bypass pin inserted. 
Okay, bypass pin inserted then, so she's done her bit, and we're just going to await the tug to connect now. Does look really great. Gear. Okay, that is the tug connecting then. And you can just see the nose of the plane raising up slightly. Okay, and let's select uh, nose left and tail right. And parking brakes released. Commencing push. All engines are clear. Start at will. Okay, APU bleed can go on then, and that's going to start pushing that compressed air down to our engine. And our engine 2 starter mode can go to ground. And if we take a look at our engine display, we can see the N2 is starting to rise as that air gets pushed through. Now let's take a look outside. And the, uh, the engine animations also look really nice. Can't fault that. And if we check the display now, we're getting the motoring uh, message there. And we just need to wait for that to disappear. It might just take a couple of seconds. There we go. Uh, so now, once that's gone, we can add fuel to the engine and it will start up. And then it's just a case of waiting for our engine starter mode to automatically switch to the off position. And we can transfer the power over to engine 2. And then we repeat the startup procedure for engine 1. And there we go, we can now transfer the power to the Gen 2 bus and switch engine 1 starter mode to ground. And again, monitor that N2, watching it rise again. And another quick check outside to see if the fan blades are spooling up. There they go. Getting quite a cool little wing flex there as we're getting pushed back as well. Do like that. Okay, so parking brakes set. OK, so back down to the engine display. Again, we've got the motoring message. Just wait for that to rise to sort of 25%. Just take a couple of seconds. There it goes. It's just starting to move up now. There we go. So we can now pop the engine 1 fuel lever on. And we can see the EGT starting to rise, followed by the N1. There we go. Let's have another little look outside as well. That's looking pretty good. Let's just clear that master caution. And again, we're just waiting for engine 1's ignition mode to switch off. And then we can transfer the power over to the Gen 1 bus. And there we go. So starter mode is now off. So we can transfer the power over to our Gen 1, that outer switch there. And again, we can double check that on the dial at the top. So Gen 1 is all powered up and the same for Gen 2 that's all good so we can now switch off the APU so uh, APU bleed can go off we will now turn our packs on to auto as well you can hear that air condition kicking in and the APU can go off and we'll pop our taxi lights on and let's advise our ground crew cockpit to ground we have a good engine start you can disconnect So there we have it guys, we are all set up and ready for our taxi, so I'm going to leave it there for today. That concludes my cold and dark quick start guide for the brand new iFly 737 MAX 8 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, be sure to join me for part 2 where we'll continue with our taxi and takeoff. I hope you found that useful, uh, maybe you learnt something new. If you did, give it a like, subscribe and I will see you in part 2. Thanks very much for watching, bye bye.